Hey everyone, welcome back to Sharpen, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video we're going to go over the updates in Capture One version 16.2. This video is done in collaboration with Capture One, and as always they have provided a sweet coupon that you guys can use to get 20% off of any purchase. You can find that linked in the description below where you'll also find links to their social media accounts where they share very helpful tutorials on using Capture One. Alright, the first new addition is a feature called Face Focus, which is available in the Import and Cull menu. Now you won't see this in the Grid menu, instead you'll have to use the the viewer menu where you'll get a large view of single images and at the top right next to it is face focus and now when you click face focus you will get a secondary viewer a little small window of every single person in the image's eye now the whole point of this is to get rid of that act of zooming in on an image to see if the eye in the photo is sharp right whether that's to view whether or not somebody blinked or to view whether or not you have really good focus without zooming in at all i can see that my front two subjects are completely in focus whereas my middle subject or the rear subject is not really in focus this face focus feature is very accurate in this example you can see that the subject on the right is looking down and there are glasses intersecting his eye so it's not a very highly visible eye yet you still get this really nice close-up view that is perfectly centered on the eye and we've also got these face focus settings on the side here so in this drop down menu we can choose how much to zoom by either 50 100 or 200 percent or we can just limit to the face or limit to the eye which is what i've been leaving it on just because it gives you the most clear view and this doesn't just work well for a single person or three people or four people no even into larger groups we still get all these perfect faces where we see a close-up of the eyes of all the people in a photo. Now I did want to test the limitations of this feature so I pulled up this shot that I did this week of 100, 100 and something graduating doctors just to see the limit and we still got around 60 faces in this image so it brought up a little independent viewer and I counted these about 60 to 70 depending on the shot so it does get most of them um, I'm not sure if there's either a hard limit like it'll only identify 70 70, or if when it sees two or more people in a frame if it just kind of counts that as one not really sure what the limitation is but honestly this probably wouldn't be how I would go through and check for blinks here in this instance I would just expand it a little bit and kind of go through the people one by one as opposed to sliding between all these uh, individual heads but the impressive thing to note here is that here I'll click this one for the first time it generates these immediately. I mean, look at we have all 60 or so faces that it found and we have an independent viewer of each of them immediately. So that is really impressive. The next addition that we have to talk about is the dust removal tool, which is still in its beta, but is quite impressive. Now I go to great lengths to make sure that dust isn't an issue on my sensor. So I had to go way back and find this photo from back when I was a D600 user, which if you were a D600 user, you know all about dust on your sensor or oil marks on your sensor if you know you know but that's exactly what we got here is a d600 landscape image photographed at f22 so i'm not sure if this is stuff on the lens stuff on the sensor or what but there's a lot of stuff over here on the left hand side now we're going to use the new dust removal tool i'm just going to click this one button about one and a half seconds later and it looks like a lot of the dust is gone you can see we've got a before after before after it's missing some of these larger ones which it probably thinks are birds and not dust but it did get rid of a ton of it and it did so without introducing a lot of ugly spots from bad sampling so it did a pretty good job here now, if you see here, we've got all caps beta. This is expected to improve dramatically in the near future here as they are working on refining it, but this is the newest instance of this feature and it's really helpful. Now, if you wanna see just how much it did, if I pull this up to where we can make some manual adjustments here, like increasing the size of a specific spot or adding a new spot entirely, you can see just how many pieces of dust that it removed from this image. I mean, it is all over this image, hundreds of spots. So even if it's not getting all of them, uh, I'd much rather take out 20 spots than I would, you know, 120. So definitely a very handy feature there. Now you guys should know one of the recent features that I'm a huge fan of is the ability to tether directly to the iPad as well as using the Capture One Live. That way I can connect with clients, let them see galleries as they are happening or immediately after a shoot. That way they can quickly view, collaborate and select their images. Now I almost entirely use the wired tethering directly to the iPad, but I have been braving wireless tethering a little bit more frequently, especially when I'm in a situation where I have a really 
good network that I'm on. And now compatibility to wireless tethering has been made available to Fuji users of the Fuji X-T5, the X-H2, or the X-H2S. So just expanding the list of compatible cameras for the wireless tethering, which is always great. And I imagine with those X-Trans sensors that most of you Fuji users are probably already in Capture One. Next up, this is not the first instance of the tool. This has been around for a while, but we do have an improvement to the Smart Adjustments. Now, if you don't know, Smart Adjustments is a tool that allows you to set a reference image that you have already corrected, its white balance and exposure, and then use that to set as a reference for other images to be dynamically edited using AI. You can see in this image, we've got some white balance adjustments as well as exposure adjustments. So we can then set this as a reference for its white balance and exposure. Now you can do one or the other, or you can do both. And then we can just click another photo in the set, hit apply, and boom, it is going to update the white balance and the exposure so that the face matches our reference photo. This is ideal for portraits in varying light conditions. It needs to be a portrait because, well, you need the face in order for the tool to function, but it's most powerful in varying light conditions where the color and the exposure is going to drift photo to photo depending on those conditions changing. So if you do a lot of work outside, this is going to be really helpful. And this can also be used in conjunction with styles. So as you see here, we've got some adjustments made specifically to the reds here, and we can save this style set as a reference and we can keep all of the adjustments that we've made and then we can apply that style and not only will it apply the styles like the color but it will dynamically adjust the white balance and the exposure to match it to the reference image so now i can go over to a photo that is completely unedited we haven't done anything to this photo when i apply this style now i get all the vibrancy from those reds as well as those dynamic white balance and exposure adjustments from my reference photo now this feature is really helpful for bad processing selecting a bunch of images I think we've got about 30 here we can apply this uh, red jacket preset to all of them and then just a few seconds later it's going to be applied to all of these images not only all those color adjustments and those contrast adjustments but dynamically adjusting the exposure trying to create the face as similar as possible throughout all the images next up is custom shortcuts if we go to edit edit keyboard shortcuts on the far right custom shortcuts we now have a menu where we can add some new and powerful shortcuts so if i click plus here we can apply a style or edit with so apply a style obviously refers to style presets so when we choose apply style we can do any of the built-in ones or any of our custom styles like that red jacket one we just created or maybe a black and white style and we can assign it to a specific key. And just like when we're regularly changing shortcuts, it's going to warn you on the bottom there, you can see H is used by pan and two other commands. So it still warns you when you're making these custom shortcuts of what else it's going to impact or what you're losing as a shortcut. So that's really handy. I'm going to apply to F, which is normally full screen, but I've already removed full screen being an option, just so I have a very simple key. And then, if I hit F, I have a custom style applied via a shortcut. So if there's something that you're using all the time, um, whether that's a style, whether that's a style brush, or if you are round tripping, launching other applications in your workflow, you can now make those keyboard shortcuts so that you're not right clicking and going through multiple tabs to get to that option. And a final general improvement is faster raw previews. You know, when you first import a gallery and you gotta wait a little bit for all those raw previews to develop before you can kind of quickly navigate throughout the software, well, that speed has been improved. Raw files are now up to 27% faster, DNG files are up to 44% faster and this affects not only importing images from a drive and getting to go around that gallery but also your time from tether to an image being visible in the catalog. I'm a huge fan of this because my long-term storage solution is to convert everything to DNG just so that I have a smaller archive overall. And so this way, whenever I'm bringing in an old set of photos for any reason, now my previews are even faster. So anytime there's a performance jump, I'm all for it, especially when it's in a software that I already consider to be the leader in terms of performance. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. As a reminder, if you're not already a Capture One user, 20% discount code in the description below. Thanks again to capture one for collaborating with us on this video. We'll catch you guys in the next one.